Kudzika kwa yeshe kurenga mepanyika zicha shami sanyika Mose wakafa wakarara muna Kristu wachamutwa Mukurura miso Nesu Nesu Ticha Simu Tichi Muchinga Mizamu Makore Tichiti Muchene Muchene Jehovah. Thank you so much, uh, virtual chorister. I love that song. It has got a meaning. It, it, it strikes my heart. My heart, sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It blesses me and it brings me closer to my America. Church of God and Saints of Christ, to the bishop in his absence, uh, to the elders in the house, to the deacons, to the sister elders, grandmother Sarah, sorry. Um, and the Church of God and Saints of Christ family and visiting friends in general, I say, oh, hey, I trust it is well with thee. Uh, I want to give my testimony for Jesus in the spirit of prophecy, thanking God for my life. I can spend the whole afternoon thanking God for who he is and for what. He is mightily done for me and to me. Church of God, I don't want to take much of, most, much of your time. I want to end my testimony with a song that I so love. Um, I shall, uh, the song goes, <clears throat> <coughs> sorry, forgive me. The Lord, the Lord is good, the Lord is good, the Lord is love, the Lord is love, he sent his son to die for me, to die for me. Oh, 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 oh what a man of love, what a man of love, the Lord, the Lord is good, the Lord is good. The Lord is love, the Lord is love, he said his son to die for me, to die for me. Oh, 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 oh. What a man of love, what a man of love. Oh, 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 oh. what a man of love, what a man of love. Church of God and Saints of Christ, pray for me and I pray for you. As I said, I'm not going to take much of your time, saints. Uh, let us pull out our swords and go to the book of Acts, chapter 4. Uh, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 4, so that we can read. It's, it's, it's one of the precepts that you all know that is so familiar uh, with the members of the Church of God and Sons of Christ. And I believe. Uh, God has got a message for us today on this. I shall start to read from the 10th verse 
to the 14th verse. It reads, be it known unto you all, everybody in this Zoom house today, be it known unto us and to all the people of Israel that by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you all. This is the, the stone which was set at not of you builders, which is became the head of the stone of the corner. Neither is there any salvation in any other, for there is no any other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when ye, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. I want you to take note of verse 30, that when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. May God bless the reading of his scripture. Saints, when you are in Jesus, when you are in, when Jesus is within you, people who recognize the presence of Jesus, people will be mother. It says, they took notice. They took notice of Peter and John, that they have been with Jesus. Have you been with Jesus? Have you been with Jesus? Uh, for the subject today, I would like to give the title, um, All You Need is Jesus. All you need, all I need is Jesus. That's the title of my message this afternoon. Saints, we are being told that the Sanhedrin committee, they took Peter and John they brought the, themselves to them and they started questioning them about their belief in Jesus because they were talking about no other name that we are given saints which can save us. I don't know. I know there are so mighty names we can talk about. I know about so many great people we can talk about but they can never be equated to the name of Jesus. Peter and John spoke boldly before the Sanhedrin, even though they were not schooled. They talked boldly without fear. You know, they were outnumbered, but their faith, their knowledge, because the one who was within them was greater than the one who was outside. They were not scared of this uh, smartly dressed men who were intimidating them while they were talking about a man called Jesus. Like what Sister Elder Kim uh, preached the other day about a man called Jesus. That's the man I'm going to talk about, about today. 
No other name we are given. There are so other mighty names, so many names of prophets, so many names of my grandfather, of, of my patriots, but none of all those names can save me and can save you. We are going to talk about names. What's in a name, saints? What is in a name? We'll read from the book of Proverbs chapter 12. It talks about a good name. It's rather to be chosen than great riches. People these days are so obsessed about having money. They are so obsessed about being famous. They are so obsessed about so many other things. But here, this, the, 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 the Proverbs is telling us that there is no other good name, no name that we can choose. Saints, the name, Jesus is the name that can save you and save you. You can go to your sangoma. You can go to, you know, with yourself, those prophets, some of them who are highly known, especially in countries in Western Africa, like Nigeria, where, are, where, where, where they are extorting a lot of money from people using their fame, using their names. But we are being told here that no other name, neither in heaven, even under heaven, that we can be saved. Who can save you? I cannot save you. Your pastor cannot save you. Your bishop cannot save you. But Jesus, the name Jesus, it is rather to be chosen, saying, than any other name, than all the riches we can think about, than everything that we can talk about. We are talking about the name Jesus. I'm not too sure who your role model is. You know, church, a good name is better than precious oil. What is your reputation? What is your reputation? Most of us, we want good names, but we don't want to work for it. We want to be called so and so, but you don't want to work. Some of us want to be in the ministry, but they don't want to work for the work of the ministry. Some of us want to be called good people in church, but they don't want. They, they, they come to church late. They are always up then. They can leave the church when they want. They come to church dressed the way they want. They don't listen to their pastors, but they want a good man. It is time for us to be here church. We need to work for it. Jesus worked for it. What did he say in John 3, 6, John, John 16, 33? He went through everything. He was reviled by his own. He was even betrayed by one of his cabinet ministers. But he never held grudges against Judas. He left Judas to die of his own conscience. We struggle in church with the people who want good names, who want to be talked good about, yet they do nothing. I have said it before and I will say it again. We want good names, but we don't want to give our time to the work of the ministry. What is your reputation in the church? At work? At school? How do people know you? We heard Hezekiah saying, proudly saying, check my record. What is your record? How do people know you? Do you have a good name? If I come to your workplace, what is your record there? Are you a good ambassador of Christ? Church, we have to work for a good name. The name Jesus, which can save us, is a good name. That's why we are called the saints of Christ. Saints of Christ, because it's a good name. It's a good name. And we are proud to be called the saints of Christ because he overcame everything that was thrown at him, are we overcomers, as the word said last night? You know, most of us, we associate with badness. Some of us, we are the advisors of Rehoboam. 
we go and say, no, 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 no. The good advice you have been given by the elders, do away with that. We can advise you. How many of us in this church today who are the Rehobams of this world? He murdered his own name. He pulled his name in mud because there was an opportunity for him to make a good name for himself, but he didn't. He chose to listen to bad advice, which soiled his name. We talk of Solomon. When Solomon prayed, he didn't ask for a good name. He asked for, a, for wisdom, which builds a good name. If you have but wisdom, you, it attracts a good name around you. I'm going to talk today about a name that can save us, that can save you, and that can save your family if they listen to you. I'm talking about Peter. You know, we are told that these guys, they didn't go to school. They never attended, attended any form of education. And, but when the Sanhedrin committee tried to intimidate them by their numbers, by their robes, and all that stuff. They spoke boldly about the Jesus who he had resurrected from, 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 from death. They, when they killed him and bribed people that they should say he has been stolen, they bribed them and thought that they were going to instill fear into Peter and John. But they spoke boldly. They stood their ground and said, this very same Jesus, who is even standing in front of you, whole. They, they thought they killed him, but he was there establishing these brothers. I don't know about you. I don't know whether you stand for Jesus. Most of us, when our life is threatened, we tend to put Jesus on the side and we try to fight our own battles. No, the battle is not our sin. The battle is of the Lord. We need to stand for Jesus. Come rain, come sunshine, whatever it takes, stand up for Jesus because he is, he is our Savior. Now, you know, we, we always talk about benediction, Jude 24, 25. We know Jesus is in there in every situation. He protects his own. Those whom he called, he established them. He strengthened them. Why? Because they have invested their faith in him. I'm not too sure of the Jesus in you. You know, those who are cowards, those who are afraid, they are letting us know that they have a small Jesus in there. Yes, your Jesus is very small. If you are a coward, if you don't stand up for him, it shows this Jesus is small in you. I know Jesus, when he stood with these two guys, they, he, he, he reinforced them, he strengthened them, he established them, and they spoke boldly because they are resurrected Jesus has given the power. Saints, all what we need is Jesus. If they, if they didn't have Jesus, they were not going to speak boldly. They were never going, they, they were going to be scared of the Sanhedrin coming. Church, what we need is to build a strong relationship with Jesus. Because that's the name. That's the person. He is the gate. He is the bridge to eternal life. All what we need is to repent, believe, and we will be saved. If we don't believe saints, we will never be saved. Let us proclaim the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, be it in, in sunshine, in rain. I can see in South Africa, it's cold today, it's cold this time because they are in the winter. But this side of the, uh, of, the, of the earth, we are, this side of the, I mean, of the country is summer and we are enjoying our summer. What am I saying? I can see some of them with so many layers on them. In spite of the coldness, you have come out of your comfort zone. You have come out of your, of your bedroom to come and glorify the name because you know there is a reward. 
So what does Jesus want us to do so that we can be his? We are told from the book of Romans chapter 10, 9, said we must confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. We must confess that he, God raised him from the dead. We must confess and believe in him that he was raised from death. And we shall be saved. We shall be saved. Only Jesus can save us. Nothing else, no other name, no other name in heaven on earth we, in which we can be served. Do you have that name? Are you standing up for Jesus? Are you crying aloud for Jesus? Are you losing everything for Jesus? Because if you lose it for Jesus, you will gain. Saying that we got to believe. We got to believe that we have got a savior, a savior called Jesus, a man called Jesus who gave his all to save you and me, who was hung on the cross to save you and me, who allowed himself to be ridiculed and despised so that he can purchase me and you by his blood. I'm reminded of the story of Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. We know Abraham, he was called the father of righteousness because he believed it was counted to him that he is righteous. So we got to believe. We got to believe because we need to be saved. His first sermon, Jesus said, the time is fulfilled. The time is fulfilled. Repent and believe the gospel. Because once we believe, we have the right back to the tree of life. I'm talking about the name of Jesus. Why am I saying so? Because Isaiah told me in 45, he said, every tongue, every tongue shall confess, every knee shall bow. Every, who is like unto him? Nobody. Who can be compared to him? Nobody. Who is equal to Jesus? Nobody. There is no other name that we, are, we have been given under the sun that can be compared to Jesus. Whether you want or not, you shall bow. You shall confess that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Friends, we got a saved called Jesus. I remember some time ago, when I was too, I was too young in Zimbabwe, there was a man who was calling himself Jesus, and people were carrying him, walking in the streets, carrying him in, a, in, a, in very cozy sofas, but he died. And we know where his grave is. He's six feet under. That's not our Jesus. Our Jesus defied death. He rose from the dead. And as I speak, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. A man called Jesus. A name which can save you and save me. He said, whatever you shall ask in my name, in whatever we require, whatever we want in our life, if we ask it in this man's name, in this man called Jesus, because his name is mightier than any other name. His name is greater than any other name. His name liveth forever. Anything that we can ask in his name, we shall be given. Who can be compared to our Jesus? Who can be compared to him? Who is like unto the all Lord our God, glorious and in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Our God do wonders. Our Jesus does wonders. Who cannot fear and serve such a mighty God? Who cannot save such a saving God? Who shall not fear him? Who shall not fear him? Jeremiah asked. Who? Nobody. Nobody cannot fear him. He is consuming fire. Why can you not fear him? Who is like unto thee among, among the mighty O Lord? Who dwelleth on high? Nobody but Jesus. Saints, I love to talk about this name. 
this man called Jesus. What a mighty name. I want to thank God. I want to thank Jesus for drawing me nigh into his household, for drawing me into, his, into this act of serving. I want to thank God for sending Jesus. He said, who shall I send? And Jesus stood up and said, here am I. Here am I. Send me, Lord. Here am I. Are you, can you proclaim today and say, here am I? Who is this Jesus I'm talking about? I want you saints, you and me today, to recognize that God has sent his son to die for you and me so that we can have eternal life. The reason why Jesus endured humiliation, the reason why Jesus endured the pain of the cross is because he loved us so much. He loved you so much so that you can get eternal life. That's the whole purpose of us coming in here to get salvation through the name Jesus Christ. You know, when you look in the book of Micah chapter seven, it tells us, It says, who is like unto thee that pardon iniquity? Church, our Jesus, he forgives. Our Jesus, he, he, he forgets about all the things that we have done wrongly to him. All what he said, believe in him and he can purge us with his soul, which is his blood. He wants to wash you and me all, for all the sins that we have done, for all the things that we have done knowingly and unknowingly which are wrong. He wants to pardon our iniquity today. Saints, he retaineth not his anger. He does not hold grudges. He does not keep it, but he, because he is merciful. We serve a merciful Lord. You know what, I am quite, I know, I used to walk in darkness. I used to walk in darkness too, but when the light shone upon me, when the light of Jesus, who is the light of the world, he called me into his ministry and I'm so thankful. Thank you, Jesus, for calling you. Thank you, Jesus, for calling me. I was lost, but I am found in Jesus. And I'll try to cling on to the name. I want to cling on to the name Jesus because it is a serving name. Our Jesus is the light of the world. Do you want to be served? Yes, he came to save you and me. That's why I'm saying today, there is no other name. You can think of other big names you can talk about. We got big names in football. We got big names in, in, in movies. We got big names in politics. We got big names in, 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 in bands, those who, play, who go to the, to the bands and all that stuff. They are big names though, but those big names cannot be compared to the name Jesus, because all other names they are sinking sand. You will drown. You will sink if you hold on to them. The name to be aspired, the name to be liked, the name to to, to do anything for is the name Jesus Christ. Why? Why do we have to call upon His name? Why do we have to trust in him? Why do we have to love Jesus? Because he is the light of the world. He is not like the devil who came to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus came to give life and to give it abundantly. That's why I say I love the Lord. That's why I say I love Jesus. Because he came to give life and to give it abundantly, saints. You can have eternal life. I can have eternal life. We can have eternal life. As long as we believe that Jesus is Lord. I don't know whether you believe that Jesus is Lord, but I'm, I, I'm encouraging you saints to hold on to Jesus, to believe in our maker, to believe he was there from the foundation of the earth. 
Jesus, our Savior. I don't know. You know, I like the humility of this man. You know, I, I know some people who have left the church because uh, they, they, they had some bad rumors about them. They walked away. I know some people who walked away from this or oh, oh, because the church did not help me when I, I was going through something. I know some people. Look at Jesus. Look at what, he, what, what happened to him. He was hung on the cross. But still, for you and me, and when he, he, he came, he knew he was the Lord, but he never, never wanted to be saved. He wanted to, he saved us, not to be saved. He came to this world to be saved, to be a ransom of many. Imagine, imagine the little things that have caused us to leave church. Because some of them, we have not been saved. You know, when something happens, you know, you 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 spill water in church. What do you do? He called. He can can I come and can 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 you come and, and, and mop this water? You spilled it. Why can't you clean it? You want a good name, but you don't want to do. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I don't know, saints. I don't know whether we are ready to be saved. I don't know whether you are ready to be saved, but I want to tell you something today. If you want to be saved, you need the humility of Jesus. We need to build that relationship with the man called Jesus. You know, that relationship, I want, I want you to know today, let us have that relationship, which is like a fish in water. The fish live in water. If you take out the ship from the fish from the water, it dies. So you have to take the fish out of the water, you put it in water, you take it warm and cook it in water, you eat it after eating it, you, you wash down with the water. That relationship, that one, from start to beginning, hold on to Jesus, have that relationship with, with the fish has got with water. It cannot survive, it can't live outside water. You cannot live without Jesus. You need Jesus. Why do you need Jesus? Because when he touches you, you will never be the same. When Jesus visits you, you will never be the same. When Jesus comes into your life, he will transform you internally and outwardly. That's the Jesus that we serve. Come on, church. We need to serve this name because there is no other name that we were given under sun which can be, which can save you and me. God is today is looking for men like Peter. He's looking for people like John today who can stand, who can stand fast, who cannot break down, who cannot go back, who cannot backtrack, who continue in spite of the situation, in spite of the intimidating, intimidating situation they are. They will hold on and speak boldly about the Christ that we know and say. He's a great physician. He wants to touch you today. Hold on. Don't lose up. Stop memory. Hold on. Hold on to his hand. He's coming at the right time. And his time is the best time. Hold on to it, saints. Jesus is coming. Don't let him go. Let's hold on unto him. Why should we hold on to him? For he is the king of kings and lord of hosts. He is the wonderful. He is the mighty counselor. Church, he is the everlasting father. The prince of peace. Do you have your prince of peace? Do you have your counselor? Do you have your wonderful, almighty God? In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the, the word was with God, and the word became flesh. Jesus became flesh so that he can save you. He can save, he wants to save you. That's why he became flesh. I don't know whether you're ready, but I'm ready. Let us be ready to meet him when the trump sounds. The man, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father, the Good Shepherd, 
I can go on and go on talking about this man, the good shepherd. You know, if you know a shepherd, he looks after his after his animals. He will not want any to lose any of his animals. That's the Jesus. We, we, he died so that we can we can have eternal life. A good shepherd dies, and he gave away his life for his flock. That's the Jesus we have. Saints, let us hold on to Jesus. Let's lift him on high. Let's praise him. He is the door of the sheep. He is the chief cornerstone. As we have done that, the builders cast him aside, but he became the chief cornerstone. Without Jesus, your house is not stable. Without Jesus, the foundation is not stable. We need to be laid upon the apostles and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone of that. He is our strong tower. He's my battle axe. He's my refuge. He's my shield. He's my good Samaritan. He's my bread of life. He's my life giver. He came to give life and to give it abundantly. The bright and morning star. I'll find money and omega. The true vine. The beginning and the end. Who cannot serve such a God? Who cannot serve him? We need Jesus sent. All name, all other names are singing sense. But that of Jesus. We need Jesus in our life. I'm not saying you want Jesus. It's Jesus is a need in your life. You need Jesus to overcome. You need Jesus to, 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 to prosper. You need Jesus for healing because he's a physician. We need Jesus for anything that we can think about. We have a serving Jesus who was there from the beginning and he will be there until the end. Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Sabbath, saints.